I'm Nan Simonson, and actually I'm going to wait one minute, so I take it back. <laughs> I'm still Nan, but I'll introduce myself at the beginning of the hour. So, anyway, there. Hi, I'm Nan Simonson, and I welcome you to my Facebook Live today, January 17th, no, 18th of 2022. I am the author of Aging Powerfully, and I don't know if you can see this, but I'm wearing the blouse I wore when this photo was taken October, gosh, I guess it's been um, two years now, and um, my book was published um, a year ago, uh, so actually it was October, a year and a half when I had the photo taken, but that doesn't matter because I'm here to talk to you about food. The preempt um, promotional piece to this Facebook Live was um, uh, what is your protein tied to? What are your carbohydrates tied to? What are your fats tied to? And that was nebulous, wasn't it? Uh, not clear at all what I was talking about. And yet, this was inspired <laughs> I don't know if you can see my cat down in the corner. Um, having opened the door sort of threw me off. The, um, the subject of this uh, inspired me because I ha am going now on four years of whole food, plant-based uh, eating. I believe so strongly that it has reversed the direction of my health and well-being, which means, in essence, the direction of my life, because prior to converting to whole food plant-based, I had had lab work done that scared me. High cholesterol, we're going to medicate. Rheumatoid arthritis, we're going to medicate. Um, Pre-diabetes, uh, we're going to medicate. And I knew that was going to be the beginning of a black hole health-wise because medications can ameliorate symptoms, seldom cure anything, and always dip, disrupt our body to the degree that something else needs to be moderated. Something else needs to be medicated to make up for what is out of balance. And I knew that, and I didn't want to do it. And I had um, a situation even before that, a year before that. Well, it wasn't even a year, was it? Uh, where I was told that I needed to have my gallbladder out because there was something in it called sludge as opposed to stones. It was obviously that descriptive is pretty good. Uh, and I said no. What bothers me a lot is that it's now been three years, gallbladder is perfect. And when you have a gallbladder removed, that doesn't fix things. That quite often compl complicates things um, because there is a purpose for the gallbladder and the bile that it produces. Um, blood sugar is 81, 82 in the mornings and if you know anything about that, that is far from pre-diabetes and that is like beautiful fasting blood sugar. Uh, the cholesterol now is under 150 which some doctors say make a person bulletproof to arterial plaque. I don't know that anything makes us bulletproof but in other words that's a great number. Uh, the rheumatoid arthritis I can move like I moved when I was a young person. Something can drop on the ground and I don't moan thinking about going down to pick it up. In other words, everything has changed. Now, a lot of people my age began, and I'm, I just turned 71, a lot of people a decade before my age, uh, two decades before, are looking at knee replacements, hip replacements, um, uh, osteoarthritis, things that they believe and believed were the ramifications of aging. And I believe 
that I have shown that that is not so. Because in essence, it was the ramifications of my body not getting what it needed to heal itself. Hippocrates said, what is that, 2,400 years ago? Let the body heal itself. The body wants to heal itself. Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. I decided to embrace that. And I chose the foods that were shown to be the most regenerative, restorative, antioxidant, and nutritious on the planet. And they are all plant foods. So I have been searching because since writing my book, December of 2020, it was, um, it was, um, went out onto Amazon and became that week an Amazon bestseller in its genre. Um, and so I'm a best, Amazon bestselling author. I, um, from that time on, I have a stated mission that I want to make a difference in the world in these years I have left. Now, some people, when they talk about years they have left and they're in their 70s, think that that's a pretty short time. The life expectancy of a male in America, actually, life expectancies have been going down consecutively for the last three years. But last I heard, for a male is about 78, a female 80, 82. And so, some people would think, I don't have a lot left. Well, I don't buy that at all. I believe that our bodies, and I'm a coach with lifestyle medicine, and this is what we find in the healthiest populations. And the healthiest populations in the world have been identified by National Geographic and Dan Buettner as those blue zones when living in their traditional lifestyles have shown that we can go into our 80s, 90s, and beyond healthy and productive and um, feeling great, not just slodging through our days. And I believe that. So if I believe that, I have to look at these next 10, 20, 30 years as years to fill with productivity. And my goal, my mission, my passion is to help people understand, possibly by setting an example, possibly by finding or choosing the right words, having enough other examples. I've done enough research that my belief is rock solid. It is sealed in stone because I, it's unwavering in my mind that if we choose pillars of lifestyle, we sleep well enough and we learn to de-stress. We move often and well so that our bodies are kept moving as the years go by. We have community, love, support that we get and that we give and that we have a diet that supports human health better than any other and that is a whole food plant-based diet and evidence and research has shown it. The problem is, it is very hard to get the word out there because the forces that be, where all the money is, all of the corporate interest is, all of the influence, verbal and media, is against that because there is no money to be made by, well, there is if they would simply change paradigms, but they're not going to. But I'll finish that sentence. There's no money to be made and encouraging people to meet, eat more beans and grains and seeds and nuts and fruits and vegetables. Those are inexpensive commodities to make and they're not even the subsidized commodities in America. The subsidized commodities, you know where those go? Those goes to animal, go to animal feed and then hopefully to do what we can to clean up the environment from the mess that that makes. But I'm not going to go into all of that. I'll simply say, and all of this was my build up to this sentence, that I have been looking for a way to help people 
easily understand the value, the reason, the value, and then even be encouraged and want to transition little by little as much as possible in any way they can to a more whole food plant-based diet. And I heard some words recently that really resonated with me and that was a a description of those macronutrients that everyone pays attention to. What are they? Protein, fat, carbohydrates. What is the protein all media tells us to eat? <laughs> Meat and animal protein. There are billions of dollars invested in that everywhere and congressional incomes made by the people who support those industries. The proteins, fats, another macronutrient, what is an example of that? Processed oils. In, uh, I won't even go into the rest of what I was going to say. Processed oils. And then what about the carbohydrates? Processed, highly processed foods. None of those foods are the best we can have. Why? Because protein from animals, and this is what my point was, if we can kind of think of it this way, when people say, oh, well, I couldn't do without my meat, or I, I don't believe that's not the healthiest choice. What is the protein from animal sources? And I'm talking about white meat, red meat, fish, um, eggs, dairy. What is that packaged with? It's packaged with all kinds of inflammatory elements. The hormones, the antibiotics, the cholesterol, the dietary cholesterol, the um, saturated fat, um, and not to mention the state of being of these animals and the cruelty that it takes to produce those for us. So all of that is packaged in that protein. Where else would we get the 30 grams of protein we're going to get from a nice size steak? Hmm, how about garbanzo beans? How about kidney beans, black beans, pinto beans? How about seeds and nuts? How about grains? But the most we're going to find is from our legumes. Some people think, well, I can't eat legumes because they upset my stomach. Well, if you don't eat legumes, they're going to upset your stomach because your stomach is used to something very different. We have this microbiome, three to five pounds in our gut, but actually all over, of bugs. I'll just leave it at bugs. They're bacteria, protozoa, some yeasts, some archaea, a combination of microbes that actually are, are outnumber the cells in our body. So basically, we are here for their use because they're the ones, the microbiome, that break down and then produce... Um, uh, some of the most active um, products in our body that actually feed the rest of our body. What is that? They produce fatty acids. What do they eat? They eat fiber. The only thing that, that is eaten by the microbes in our microbiome is fiber. Without that, we're not feeding them. Without feeding them, we have dysbiosis and our body is struggling for good health. So, where do we get, if you're trying to make decisions about the wisest way to choose a meal, instead of all of the noise about everything that we hear, how about asking ourselves a question, what is that, if you're looking at macronutrients, what is that protein tied to? Is it tied to, like the garbanzo beans, is it tied to fiber? to feed the microbiome? Is it tied to antioxidants? You bet it is. Is it tied to phytonutrients, phytochemicals? 
the phytonutrients and phytochemicals in many cases are what become the the um, base products from which are extracted medications that we take. We can get it from the food. What about our fat? What is our fat tied to? Is our oil tied to anything? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, oils are highly processed. We may get some omega from some omega sixes from fatty acids from our oils, but that's part of the problem. We get far too many that are way out of balance with the omega three fatty acids that we need. If we get our oils from seeds and nuts, what are they tied to? They're tied to a well. Uh, the ALA, the arachidonic acid that we can convert to um, to the omega-3 uh, fatty acids in our bodies. Some of us do that better than others, in which case there is marine um, algae that we can take as a sideline to help build our omega-3s. But from those seeds and nuts, we have fiber, we have protein, we have antioxidants, we have phytonutrients, we have phytochemicals. What's tied to our carbohydrates? If our carbohydrates are a processed food, everything has been stripped out of them. As a matter of fact, not only is everything stripped out for shelf life, what's put back in isn't bioavailable. Even if the name on the package looks like something that we recognize, like apple chips or, or um, freeze-dried uh, veggies. Look at the package. They're loaded with oil. They're loaded with salt. They have, in many cases, um, one or more um, stabilizers in order to keep them on the shelf. And instead of eating those beets or peas or uh, sugar snap peas, or um, carrots, those freeze-dried freeze vegetables, or again, highly processed foods, which are basically nothing even resembling the real food, are useless to our body, and they're actually damaging to our body. So what are those carbohydrates tied to? If they are the real beet, the real carrot, an apple, again, the seeds, the nuts, the legumes, they're all tied to elements that our body wants. Our body wants variety, color, because all the colors of the rainbow have different phytonutrients and phytochemicals involved with them. They have different kinds of fiber, soluble, insoluble, inulin, all of which our microbiome loves and produces um, again, short-chain fatty acids that can affect every organ in our body, even our lungs, are going to be stronger when we're feeding our microbiome properly. So I was hoping, and I don't know that I made my case as well as I could have just now, but I was hoping that if you could think of the food we eat in terms of what it's tied to that then ultimately again, feeds the microbiome, which creates metabolites that affect our organs, that create immunity. If you saw what we eat in terms of what it's tied to, not just the macronutrients, because the macronutrients are played up everywhere. Get your protein. You need a lot of protein. We actually don't need any more than 10 to 12 percent and the World Health Organization has stated that we can get by on 5 to 7 percent just fine. But in America most people are into the 30s and 40 percentiles with protein because we pound down the animal proteins morning, lunch, and dinner. And that becomes far too much when the media talks about oils drink your olive oil. There's somebody out there that says, I could drink a cup of this stuff. That is so misguided. Not only would that produce gross obesity, 
at 4,000 calories a pound for that. But what else would there be that are going to heal our body in an equivalent way any better than that? What we, were, what we should be looking for is the food that has the oil or the fat that our body wants, but that comes attached to food. And I just listed all of those foods that have fabulous fats so that we get the mouthfeel, so that we get the flavor, and by the same token, get the oils and get the fat, and the same thing with the carbohydrates. That's what I break down to a acronym, WFPB, Whole Food Plant Based. Some people worry that they would feel deprived if they transitioned to a more, more whole food plant-based diet. I wish I could convince people that not only is it fun to look at a food and think of what it can do for our body rather than what our body has to do to mitigate the damage it does, which is what happens with the oils, processed foods, as well as the um, plant proteins. It can become a game to eat knowing that every food, every color, and a variety is actually giving our microbiome something to create metabolites and our entire nervous system and our, our, um, our organs strength. You know what else, what, what happened two years ago, so it was only one year into whole food plant-based, my eyes started getting better and the prescription for my glasses became weaker. The next year the same thing happened and my ophthalmologist said, you know, you've really inspired me with your diet because when you get into my age, all they see are people struggling with not only their weight, but struggling with health and certainly struggling at every level in their body with every organ, including their eyes, which get weaker and weaker. And then you start getting into glaucoma and you start getting into the, um, uh, the, the complications of high blood pressure on the, in the um, eye orbit. And it becomes really quite troublesome, even though everything is played up. <laughs> and played down by those ads on TV that make it look like it's actually a very popular thing to do to choose these medications that they're trying to sell us on. Um, even though they then tell us why those medications could kill us. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, let me encourage you to get more information about this in a way that inspired me to even want to talk about it. And that was a podcast that I just listened to um, with um, Change for Good. That's a podcast or Switch for Good, Switch for Good. And it's a, a, a couple of women who are running the podcast. Uh, one is a athlete who was in the Olympics and the other is somebody that has been in media for a long time. The Switch to Good podcast recently interviewed Simon Hill. I bought Simon Hill's new book just, oh gosh, a couple of weeks ago. And this interview, and I, I put it into my uh, Facebook, um, group page as well as my Nan Simonson Facebook page. The name of the book is The Proof uh, is in the Plants. He has a graduate degree in human nutrition and has spent a lifetime looking at the things I'm talking about. Uh, he works with athletes. He has worked with professional athletes for decades and decades and if there's any group that's going to push back against something that they think might weaken their money maker, their ability, their strength, their uh, recovery time, that would have been the group. And he's been able to convert many, many, many 
to whole food plant-based because of the evidence that he has shown, not to mention his own uh, story and his own strength and his own ability as an athlete um, who is 100% whole food plant-based. He is strictly on a vegan diet. So I want to, I'd like to recommend Simon Hill's The Proof is in the Plants, but an even faster way to get a really clear picture of everything I'm talking about, but in, in a elementary way, um, is to listen to the podcast, which for good, the name of the podcast is, um, oh, the Proof is in the Plants, Simon Hill, and it's Switch for Good podcast. And listen and see what you think. If you have a chance to do that, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I hope that I have um, helped you possibly uh, make a, oh, let's just say a U-turn. <laughs> possible U-turn in your health and consider or reconsider what the foods that you put into your body mean to you long term down the road to the end and the things that can change everything are the foods that our body needs to be healthy. They are our protein, fat, and carbohydrate but attached to real food, attached to all of what they are supposed to give us as a food rather than in a way that the body has to basically scratch for whatever it can get out of it and then hope to repair whatever damage has come due to it. So that's all I'm going to say. I hope you're having a great day. Consider his book, The Proof is in the Plant, Simon Hill. Consider my book, Aging Powerfully. I have a story to tell about not being so in control of those foods, struggling with an eating disorder for decades and decades, leaving that behind, and then finding that through lifestyle as medicine, which I outline in 10 health modalities that can really turn health around in a very easy, simple way, we can all add decades and decades and decades to our life. If you're listening to this at 20, 30, 40, or 50, and you're quite a ways from old age, we're going to live with power and age with power, or we're going to live with weakness and age very quickly. We have the choice, and the things that I've spoken of today have a lot to do with it. Have a great day. I know I'm going to, and Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.